Alright, now I can do this check again. I don't know if this is, um... Something, but we'll go for it. What there we go. This gaunt man is not the stomach pain, or the cough, or the malnutrition. It's precisely what you could not see before. For a man who spent 44 years in, a, in the urban wild. Indeed, he speaks fluidly. His movements are rapid, if erratic. His voice, despite the cough, is there. It is capable of expressing complicated ideas. Above all, he seems animated. It's a mystery. This animation comes at a cost too. Erratic hand gestures, thought processes cut off like threads as he just stares at the logs or the reeds. He also suffers mood swings bubbling to the surface, unconstrained by his nervous system. You've seen demented people before. This feels similar, yet different. When his thoughts move, they are lucid, keen even, not senile. Some sort of motor dysfunction? No, I'm not okay. I shit blood and I'm surrounded by insane people. Mm -hmm. There it is again, erratic hand motions, bouts of rage, and the stomach thing too, of course. Them. Fucking. I didn't like that. Jealousy is a reactionary concept. I didn't like the Reaver enjoying himself. Drugged out, soothed in the arms of a young woman. I wanted him to die so he could not enjoy life anymore. So yes, basically. And I wanted to see his head explode. That too. She should know better than to hold a child murderer between her thighs. I knew he'd be there for one more second. Writhing. That's all it takes for the bullet to reach his head. Now that I think of it, I wasn't aiming for his mouth. I wanted his brains to spill out on her. But you can't have everything. He wants to see her covered in blood. To punish her. Since she came to Martinez, I saw her sneaking in the reeds early in the morning behind the fell building. It was dark, still winter. She didn't have her skimpy outfit on then, just a spot in the night, moving. Past the fell building on the coast? What was she doing there? Hiding something in the water. She had a fag after she'd done it. I was up in the ruins there. She couldn't see me, but I could see her smoking. She was nervous. But not scared. Are we gonna have to go find that as part of wrapping things up, or is that just something he's gonna tell us? Her passport and tickets to be here, <coughs> and from there to Kashev Bru. Um, fair enough. There you go. In the free state of Seminine, hidden away at the edge of the earth, near the pale. Yes, after she'd gone, it was a submersible, well made actually. Sloppy. We should have gotten her to tell us about this. Did you take the documents? No. I put them back. Why would I take them? I'm not going to phone. No. I mean... I did. She had a face like an archipelago with those birthmarks. And a body hard and lean and bruised all over. Black oh. and yellow. I could see she's taken a beating. That's not good. I could see who she was, too. A spook. On the run. Revachal's the cloaker of capital now. All the bagmen and arms dealers end up here to do drugs and have sex like animals. You could tell she was a spook from the documents? Do that they mean by, like, alien? Or? She had different color hair on the photo. And glasses. Forged. Some sordid bourgeois affair. I heard about this kind of thing on the radio. He's setting it up for you. The bruises. You can't make that out in a scope. You can't see bruises through a scope. It's just a blur. 
97% and um, basically anything but double ones. It quickly comes cool. to you. There we oh, go. Yes. Cutting those drugs of hers into little lines with a knife. Masturbating. Oh, so you are a pervert. Did you make that hole? With a clip point knife. Good for listening in, too. For hearing the moaning and the snorts. Like that, too? Yes. Bending like a bow against the glass. Mm -hmm. I've been through all of Martinez. Every nook and cranny. Yes, that, too. The things they did in that little room. What she'd do to feel good. Funny, the way light works. You turn it on inside, and it gets so dark out, you can't see a man looking in. I learned that in the 20s, when they were still hunting me. I've seen people do some shit, but... Those two took the cake. You hear the familiar scribble of the lieutenant's pen. A quick glance at you. One more loose end down. We're doing this, detective. Mm, I'll sure. just get in there, the hidden pinball workshop. I can just walk in there now after a good wash. I told you, they think I'm an antisocial. Closing hour is a good time. The kitchen's empty. You had to open the steel door in the kitchen? How? Maybe his friends with the chef? I got that open a long time ago. Some bourgeois game merchant lived there. I don't know, 15 years ago? He left spare keys all over, and I took one. Then I saw her turn the light on one night in my skull. I mean, that works too. Andy found use for it. A spare key, like the one hanging behind the Union box window. She practically breastfed that man. You wouldn't believe the things she let him do to her. You stare at them too. In your mind, her innocent stay still turns to leave. Airport bag in hand. Six flowing in her wake. See you tomorrow, Harry. Her voice rings in the evening air. Burning. Yeah. The world is insane. There's... There's nothing to hold on to. Only this. It's, it's not enough. The coals of his eyes glisten suddenly, like stones dripping with water. Is he crying? Man needs to feel something else. In this fight, it helps if you have your eye on something there. It's weakness, I know. I notice with all like the clues they set up, like the secret route and the whirling and rags and all that, it's maybe not quite as left field as you'd think, like... I know he's kind of introduced and everything all suddenly, but one thing I noticed before, I don't know if I ever commented on it, that there was never, like, I guess after you do the thing with Ruby, there's never, like, really a suspect. You can tell that someone had to be in there doing things, like, you saw with the footprints and all that, but there's never, like any of the characters who would really make sense to be doing it. So it kind of makes sense that it's, you know, like the murderer feels more like a hint towards someone who's not there in the narrative than any of the characters. So maybe it, this makes a bit more sense than you'd think. Yes, over the years, it's not unproletarian. To feel something? No. I don't really know. I was there one night and she was crying, like a child, in the corner of her room on the floor, like she does sometimes. The day after I killed him. Yes, I don't know why I do the things I do anymore. That's, I mean, we got a mind game with them, right? So. Maybe. I told you, I have holes in my brain now. I wouldn't just sit here waiting for you. 
If you came ten years ago, I would have killed you. In the silence, the lieutenant draws a line in his notes, then nods at you once more. Yeah, okay. One more down. Her. Mm -hmm. So we have a motive now, too, really. The lieutenant nods yeah, there you at go. you in acknowledgement. That's it. Motive. We have it. Mm -hmm. Where is she? That's a class, yeah. I haven't seen her there for days. Good for her. Yeah, let's give him hope. That girl kept staring into the scope, you know. In the end, this last week, kept staring at the island. Trying to figure out where the shot came from. At night, crying or smoking on the roof, like she knew I was here. It doesn't matter. Across the water, on a dilapidated jetty in a nameless village, made of grey cinder block houses with etonite roofs. Two police officers and one special consultant look across a narrow strip of sea. He's there, doing what exactly I don't know. Satellite officer Vic Mayer points at the ruins. Behind that anti-aircraft something, that's why we can't see him. Those are my old mates, right? They're, are they coming towards us or what's happening there? Special consultant Heidelstam is optimistic. We'll see the boat when he comes. Let's go get a coffee until then. I know this interesting little place. Where? His voice trails off as the three walk down the jetty. So I don't think this is the end of it. Like, that's clearly there's something gonna happen more, right? We've gotta confront them or something? As the men go, Patrol Officer Minnow looks back over her shoulder at the crumbling fortification in the snowfall like a rotten tooth rising out of the water. Good luck, Harry, she thinks. You need something good for this. Maybe they're just, like, checking up on me. We could get more. We've got him talking. Who knows what he's seen and done over the years. Yeah, I mean... You could get more out of him. He likes talking. We should if we can, right? A tragic comedy. Draggies. Prostitutes. Rentiers. A strange little engine seems to fire up in him again. It straightens his back. Specifically, the whole city is a charnel house. Stripped clean and draped in neon. But Martinez... Martinez is the worst. Because of the racists. Everyone is a racist in Martinez. It's their favorite thing to do in the whole world listening to race-themed radio shows in the ruins, in their lorries. It does seem to be about, I will say. I'm full of steroids and Radio Revachal 92. Race this, race that. It's all sanctioned by that social democratic union and the farce of a social democrat who runs it. Mm -hmm. Yes, the fly larva in his container. He let some nihilistic advertising yuppies erect a statue of Philippe III, a syphilitic murderer, on the town square, to spit on the working class. Not since the serfs of ancient Pericarnassus has history produced a more inert social class than the Martinez proletariat. The rest of Revachol at least pretends to rebuild. These people still live in ruins. Intense, like animals, like those boom-boom morons on the ice. A pity they didn't drown in that tent of theirs. Can't, is he gonna keep going? The worst of them is the blood-drenched Sucreon on her yacht, licking her lips. The old whore's gone now, her gun-toting porcelain men are dead. So, actually, I mean, I kind of killed more of them than you did in an indirect way, right? The worst is that old cop parading around in his uniform, throwing balls all day. It's not enough that the racists and liberals are dancing on our graves. The old loyalist ghouls still parade the ruins, too. I kind of feel sympathy for him, for, like, politically, you know? Every morning he's there. While the parasites he fought to protect are off in Ozone, 
or Kwayan Moran, or some other island they built their palaces on, feeding on drugs and having sex with their own children. Like, like I said, like, seeing the opportunity to, like, build a, like, equal society for people and then just having, like, having it torn down in front of you and watching all this happen in front of the ruins, like, like, he's kind of exaggerating in so far, but, like, you know, I mean, like, I feel for him. That's all the rich really want. Sex with their own children. Throughout history, even the royal bloodline of the suzerain, it's all just an excuse for them to have sordid sex. At least that old cunt Frisell is now dead. I wonder how long I can just let him go for. We did good when we pushed him under that horse car. If only in the 30s, those disco whores. I don't know what those are, but... The disco whores are too much. Hatred shuts down his brain's language center. Leave it only a nonsensical sputter. They'll, they'll do that to you. And the Supreme on her yacht? Joyce? Probably. Let's go to- can we go through them option by option? Horse. <laughs> yeah, well, that takes care of that, huh? Another hideous disappointment. Unions are the real enemy. The true enemy of the proletariat. Precating the license. Oh, so he's an accelerationist. That that's kinda cringe. I'm not a big fan of that here. Disappointment. So personal. He displays a familiarity with the union's top brass. Although Everett Claire is like not a good person. That deformed toad. I wouldn't expect him to wipe his own ass. I mean, the brains of the operation. The smart one. Edgar. <laughs> he talks a big game about uprising and social base. They must have sent the smart one to some university in Le Jardin, where it's alienation this and hegemony that. First against the war with him. The Clares wouldn't miss a man hidden in their own backyard. Not all this time. Nothing happens in Martinez without them knowing. Of course. Maybe the clears asked him to. I haven't approached anyone. I hid. It was Edgar who came to me. Oh. How did he know you were here? He didn't just stumble in like an oaf. He figured it out. Some kids told him about a monster on the island. I told you, he has brains. Mm -hmm. Stepped right off the boat and walked down where you came. I even kept the door open for him. Thought he was the man of the left. Wouldn't rat me out. I was right about one of those things. Twenty years ago, neither of them could walk now, could they? They were less fat then. That's around the time the Clears came to power. Edgar did the talking. Paid his respects like I were a fossil in a uniform. Offered platitudes about the struggle, flaunted his pink degree, even quoted Marzov. Never trust a social democrat who quotes Marzov. Oh, and charity too. They love their charity. Offered me blankets and social housing. I still have the gas cooker he brought. Let me be here. The ZOC is an unlawful successor of the commune of Revachol. We took this fortification from the loyalists. Even the Clares understand this. They let him be here. Understanding was a courtesy. But why such a courtesy? That would make sense. You know why I killed that fucker, Dwight? But, uh, yeah. As to Edgar, I'm not doing anything for that swine again. Again? What have you done for Edgar before? Tried teaching him some Marzovian socioeconomics. They didn't stick. We parted ways. Okay, he didn't do the hanged man for that. But he's insinuating something. 